Hello, KubeCon. Welcome. Uh, all right. My name is uh, Lee Calcote. Um, I'm at, at Layer 5. I'm joined by uh, Mr. Mr. Ken Owens, um, who's at uh, Fiserv. We are, yeah, yeah, I keep interrupting Ken, but he's, he's used to that. <laughs> so, uh, apologies. So we are here um, to take you all through some of the initiatives within the special interest group, um, SIG Network. SIG Network has a couple of uh, working groups, uh, one of which will be our focus today. Uh, and that one is the service mesh working group, so a hot topic. Um, and so we'll do a bit of an intro and a deep dive and we'll see if, um, if Ken will um, take us through what is SIG Network. Yeah, thanks, thanks Lee. So, um, you know, our mission statement in SIG Network is um, with an ever steady eye to the needs of workloads and developers who create them and operators who run them. SIG Network's mission is to enable widespread and successful development, deployment and operation of resilient and intelligent network systems in cloud native environments. It's really important in, in our minds, in our, our view of this um, SIG, is that we want to represent, you know, the network develop the, the network guys, but also the developers, both in the application teams, in the business teams, and also in the um, network and you know software defined networking areas. And so we're we're really looking at a broad scope within the SIG. Um, but this endeavor, we really do want to try to you know inform and clarify as our first goal, and and that's important because. As you know, there's a lot of network can be a very broad statement and can mean a lot of different things in a lot of different contexts. Um, we're very collaborative and we want to be able to kind of work with with different um, areas and different SIGs and different groups within our community to kind of help bring some of the, the cloud native um, networking aspects into the um, in the view and into clearer, clearer focus. Um, we want to assist and attract projects. Um, as, as we'll go through in a few minutes, we, we brought in some really interesting projects and, and we're really excited about how, how much we've grown in the last couple of years. And we also want to, you know, basically have, um, as, as part of the CNCF charter, we want to be impartial of, of the different projects. You know, we aren't king, we're not kingdom makers here. And so we want to you know, it's definitely fine to have different service mesh technologies together and different network technologies um, being represented here in the SIG. So just a little bit about what we've we've done over the last several years. Um, as of, you know, KubeCon North America in 2019, you know, we had, you know, you know kind of the beginning projects, right? CNI was really the first thing that we worked on as, as a group before we were a SIG. We were just kind of a networking work group at the time, and 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 Lee probably has some fond memories of the the work group times together, <laughs> the, the the six of us, right? You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but you know, since C and I, we, we you know, worked with Core DNS, Envoy, um, GPRC, Linkerd, Nats, um, uh, our friends at Cisco brought in you know some network service mesh discussions of the open source project they have going on. Um, that then really helped kind of kick us off in the beginning of 2020 at, at KubeCon Europe with, you know, some additional projects like GNI Genie and Contour and, you know, the service mesh interface you hear more about today. Um, and then we ended the year, you know, working with Chaos Mesh and Open Service Mesh. And, you know, today we're excited that we're, you know, looking at an ambassador project um, in Mastery Ingress. We're looking at, you know, K8GB, we're working with Mashery and with Service Mesh Performance, which we'll get into more a little bit later in the presentation. And on the horizon, we have a couple of things with Submarine, Submariner is sort of the, the main thing we want to look at um, on the horizon. Um, so we have a couple of working groups that um, you kind of, you know, heard Lee mentioned earlier. Um, the biggest one that we're working on right now is the Service Mesh Working Group. But we also have a very interesting working group, the Universal Data Plane API. Um, both of these working groups are active, and you know we invite your um, your participation, and you'll hear more about that um, as we go through the presentation today. Um, we do have a couple of white papers out there, 
And um, we have several presentations, but the main one I wanted to point you to is moving beyond HTTP, um, the surveying the state of layer seven protocols in the cloud native ecosystem. And so there's um, you know a lot to get involved in and a lot to do. And, and hopefully um, what you see today as we go into the deep dive and I turn this over to Lee, you'll see that there's a lot of interesting um, topics, a lot of interesting conversations we wanna have in, in the community and you know, that you want to get engaged and we'll, we'll make sure you know how to do that. So with that, I'll turn it over to Lee. Yeah, and, you know, Ken, actually that um, the last presentation that you were just highlighting, like while we have, you know, while the, the group is va um, large and networking is, is vast, that um, that presentation might be familiar to some as it was uh, subsequently presented as a keynote at last, last KubeCon as well. So I was just recalling that. Um, you know, speaking of, of recalling things like late breaking news earlier, just a few hours earlier today was um, that ambassador, the uh, emissary ingress, um, Ken, we, we've, that project has been under review in the SIG for maybe longer than, maybe, let's not, let's not you know, talk about how long, it's been there a while, it's been under diligence and uh, underwent a name change, but it's, uh, it's in, it's uh, so, yeah, you know, congrats to that, that team, that Awesome. Uh, like like, uh, like Ken was saying, um, the Service Mesh Working Group it, um, has a few different initiatives going on. The initiatives um, are interrelated. Um, they are well. The, the focus is on Service Mesh. There's a lot that um, that a Service Mesh uh, provides. A lot of ways that the, that you can use them, and uh, that's part of the focus of the. The group is to identify patterns in the way in which um, users are using service meshes, uh, trying to, to curate a collection of those. At the same time, we're also uh, taking advantage of the CNCF's uh, labs. Um, there, it's not an infrequent question that people will ask: is uh, you know, inquire about the overhead of a mesh or the some of its performance characteristics, and and they. You know, I, I don't know that, you know, one of the initiatives that's within the, the group here is, well, is to um, leverage the labs to help answer some of those questions. Um, some of those, those answers are point in time answers about um, a particular mesh or a particular type of workload. Uh, we've been fortunate to, to what Ken had said about um, some of those that have come to participate. Um, uh, one of the, the collection of participants recently have been from, from Intel and um, they you know, historically that, that organization has a long standing focus on uh, performance. Um, and so they're bringing some of their, their skills to practice here, uh, which is nice. So hopefully we'll see, as a matter of fact, I think they have a talk um, as well at KubeCon and we'll see some of the, uh, we'll have to point out where you can find some of those results. So actually, if you're, if you're in chat right now, um, ask for the link, we'll, we'll send you the link, so. Um, of those service mesh patterns, though, there has been um, a collection of about 60 that have been identified. They fall into different categories. Um, uh, oh. it, it, there's a fair bit of work that goes into really uh, refining um, these in, in detail, and that work is far from complete. Um, there's a, there's a first segment of the first half of the segment of 30 is being iterated on and being discussed. Um, those are also, there's also tooling that's being worked on um, in context of the service mesh working group. We're going to talk about some of the tooling, but some of that tooling helps uh, people run those patterns. So if you're, if you're reading through the pattern and saying, hey, hey that's of interest, and you're wanting to um, use a tool to test it out, We'll talk, we'll talk about that tool here in just a bit. Um, the part of what makes the working group um, fairly interesting is that there's a number of projects, the ones that Ken had, had listed off that are, um, well, some of them are service meshes themselves. Some of them are um, emergent standards or um, specifications that um, help um, all of us interface with service meshes in a in a standard way. And so the, the first specification here is service mesh interfaces, SMI. Um, it's kind of interesting that, that I look at um, the statement here, the very brief blurb about what SMI is, 
and reflect on some recent conversations that, that, that we've been having there. And the recent conversations have been about that last on Kubernetes uh, bit is that when SMI was first announced as a project, you know, very Kubernetes centric and, and focused, and there's been um, an expansion of that. Uh, I don't think we haven't formally concluded, but there's clearly much interest toward, um, uh, toward helping standardize uh, services that are not running in Kubernetes, but are running on a service mesh. And so SMI is focused as a standard for um, how to interface with uh, service mesh functionality in a uniform fashion. Um, similar to this as an adjoining specification, there's um, SMP, Service Mesh Performance. It's um, a specification that um, provides a standard way of describing um, the performance of a service mesh. Um, some of that is just to be able to articulate that performance um, in a concise way, to, to do it in a uniform way in which each of the service mesh projects are, um, are beginning to engage with the specification and, um, and it's our hope that uh, through, well, it, through the assistance of the service mesh working group that each of the service meshes will be able to report uh, on uh, their performance with each release under a, a set of different um, scenarios and um, use the same standard um, to do that. So there's, there's a little bit in there. The, this third um, specification is well, also just looking at this, like, and, and reflecting over the last like two weeks now, there's been, I guess, let me first explain Hamlet and then explain some, some recent news. Um, so Hamlet is um, you know, generated uh, and put forth largely by um, VMware, but in collaboration with um, uh, HashiCorp and, and Google and begins to define um, really like to put it in my own to concisely, I guess is, to, uh, is really to define um, a set of interoperable service catalogs. So like to the extent that you're running multiple meshes, whether they are homogeneous or, or heterogeneous um, types of service meshes, that inevitably you're gonna want those workloads to be able to interact between um, the different service meshes. So you're gonna want it to be able to federate them. And so that's the, the, the crux of the focus of, uh, of this specification. Um, here recently, there's been, well, there's about three areas that that multi-cluster kind of federation discussions are happening. There's some of that going on within the um, Kubernetes, um, uh, well, I forget the name of the SIG, but the, there's multi-cluster being discussed there as a new API, a little bit of that being discussed in Service Mesh Interface, and a little bit here in Hamlet. And, and Ken will you know, quickly tell you that uh, that's a great example of what this um, SIG network is, is about. And um, yeah, it, it's from this vantage point that we would be able to identify some of those, you know, I don't know that duplicities is the right, um, the correct word exactly, but to be able to make sure that individual efforts are at least aware of one another and can, and can collaborate. And, and uh, so we're, so if you're, so if you're listening right now, this is a good place to come and, and work those through. Uh, uh, one of the, so um, based on the fact that there are many meshes out there um, and a number, a number of them in the CNCF that, and, and whether they're in the CNCF or not, um, there is uh, those that have chosen to implement service mesh interface. Um, and just like any specification, um, you need some tooling to be able to verify the compliance of that spec. And so in this case, you'll need tooling to, oh, that works with um, each of those eight different service meshes that implement SMI. Um, and for the, it to flex each of the four specifications that SMI currently has, there's a fifth that's being discussed now. And so, uh, if you're familiar with Sonoboy of uh, the, well, I shouldn't say of the Kubernetes project, but Sonoboy to, to what Sonoboy is to Kubernetes, um, this SMI conformance initiative is that uh, to, to SMI. Uh, and so there's some early reports, actually, this will be the first time I think that um, these reports are being shown. Uh, reports of, it's about, is it about five? Yeah, about five different service meshes and um, their 
uh, where their their compliance falls with respect to these different. Um, right now, it's just three different of the SMI specs. You're, we're seeing a lot of red, and there's good reason for that. Um, that's because the SMI spec, uh, a new version, was just released uh, about a week ago, and so um, there was a, a breaking change. It's um, in, in terms of that that spec, and so. Hence, part of the, the, the red here, just um, for the moment. Um, so so we, it's our hope to get a, a few more of the implementations um, up here, get, get them um, participating in the, in the tests um, even more directly. The tool that's being used um, is, is Meshery, and it is one of the, the tools that, that Ken had mentioned a moment ago. It's up for, um, up for adoption into the CNCF. Um, Ken, if you oblige me, and if you were to click on that, that Meshery logo, there is, Meshery um, implements the, these SMI conformance tests. It also implements the service mesh, um, service mesh performance specification, and it, and it kind of does so across um, any number of service meshes. And so um, on that service mesh performance specification though, on, on the next slide, um, We'll, we'll describe that a little bit more. This specification is also up for uh, review and donation to the CNCF. I had articulated it earlier as a way of, a standard way of capturing and describing your infrastructure, you know, um, characterizing your service mesh performance. Um, it does that, the spec directly does that. It also um, facilitates some other interesting things. It facilitates maybe benchmarking of a given mesh over time and how well it's doing from release to release. Um, it facilitates uh, uh, comparisons between service meshes to the extent that that's uh, app, you know, apples to oranges, uh, to the extent that that's, those are comparable. It also facilitates, um, well, potentially a new um, performance index, maybe a new um, concise way of articulating uh, the, you know, how well, how fast or efficient your service mesh is running. And, and I think it's this next slide that talks a, about um, MeshMark, uh, which is an emergent, um, uh, well, it's an emergent uh, ruler or uh, yardstick for, um, it's an emergent index by which you would, um, um, you know, like I was just saying, like concisely, concisely convey um, how well your um, system is running. It's really um, quite complex. Um, maybe harder than I think some of the folks that had gotten into it um, had initially considered. Um, what's been fortunate here over the last month or so is uh, some new maintainers have joined the initiatives, um, a couple from Red Hat, some from Intel, and, and are hopefully um, helping define a new, a new way of, of uh, describing service mesh performance. So um, maybe I'll, I'll leave it at that and um, leave you with the cliffhanger of what that ends up looking like. So, so you're seeing um, some of the, uh, you're seeing each of these initiatives overlap a little bit. Um, and it's been long been the intention of the, the working group to um, get some of these projects, uh, well, uh, that, that were um, generated inside the working group um, into um, the CNCF. Um, I don't know that that's the intention for the maintainers that are working on um, Get Nighthawk. But it becomes kind of necessary. This, this particular initiative becomes necessary to the extent that, um, well, that that Nighthawk is quite a capable piece of software, and if you're saying Night what, uh, then I'll quickly tell you that that Nighthawk is, <clears throat> um, well, more or less a sub project of Envoy. And maybe at some maybe at some point it won't be a sub project, but it'll be. But anyway, it's it's a performance um, characteristic tool, so it's it's a load generator. It's, it's quite quite capable. It's written in C plus um, plus. It builds alongside the same build tool chain as as Envoy, and uh, to be able to facilitate some of the tests and the benchmarks that, that are being performed within SMP, um, this project Get Nighthawk is uh, bringing together. <clears throat> is making it easier for people to get um, to get Nighthawk into the hands of of the masses, so to speak. Um, the integration with uh, Meshery and Nighthawk will well it will advance that even more. But it will also hopefully advance 
a little bit of the state of the art around some of the, the research that's being done um, within the working group. We've got um, a couple of universities that um, have participated in these discussions. Um, I think our most recent one was a professor from N NYU, um, quite interested in um, try, trying to help advance the studies that are going on and, and really need tooling like this to be able to do it. It's, it's pretty painful to see researchers, um, you know, like trying try to pull together scripts and various things to like spending half their time and just trying to get the environment working when, when there's some um, easier to use tooling there that they can just um, go take and, and run their tests. And so uh, that's a, in large part what um, Get Nighthawk is about. There's an adaptive load controller in Nighthawk itself that um, uh, that may change the way that those that are running service meshes think about um, optimizing and tuning their mesh. So some exciting things in the project. Yeah, thanks, Lee. That was an awesome job of describing so much of the of the great efforts we have going on in the in the in the SIG. So thank you for that. Um, we, we kind of wanted to end the presentation asking for engagement and, and ensuring that you, you know, were asked to be engaged. But we always hear that, you know, if, if we just have asked for them to, you know, people for to get engaged with us, we'd have more engagement. So, so we are going to have a call for engagement, you know, call for participation. Um, we have meetings um, twice a month. They're on the first and third Thursdays of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, we have meeting minutes that we, we keep track of. So you're welcome to kind of catch up on some of the things that we, we've talked about and everything that Lee mentioned, there's, you know, links in this deck and there's also links in the meeting minutes to, to some of the, the projects directly. Um, we definitely would love you to connect with us on Slack. We have a, you know, SIG network is our Slack channel. And if you, um, you know, want to join our, our, our SIG network, we our SIG uh, service mesh um, work group. We have, um, you know, mailing list available at list.cncf.io. Uh, um, and with that, I, you know, I thank you very much for your time and, and uh, thank you, Lee, for, for co-presenting with me. I think this has been a really um, useful and helpful, um, you know, use of, of the description of what we have going on in the SIG. There's, there's a lot. Um, you, while, <clears throat> while Ken and I are sitting here fielding questions in chat, uh, I've got a question. Um, Ken, you were just saying, uh, there's a call for participation. People can jump into the meeting minutes, jump into the meeting. Um, a question, do, 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 do those that show up, do, do they need to belong to a CNCF member company? Do they need to be a platinum sponsor? As, you know, like, <laughs> what's, what's the entry price into the, uh, to come and I have a Swiss bank account. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's a great question because it, there are a lot of, um, you know, we do hear a lot of, of people worried about and getting engaged. Um, we are, you know, first and foremost, an open community and we welcome, welcome your engagement and your involvement without, you know, being a, a member company or, or paying any sort of fees to, to get involved. And, um, we do, um, unlike, I guess one of the concerns people have is if you don't pay for, for entry, how, how good is your outcome? And I think our outcome is awesome. So I think you don't have to worry about the, the, the effort and the, you know, the desire that we have in the work group would definitely drive the right outcomes for the, for the community. That's a great question, Lee. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking us through this, Ken. Um, I guess we'll, We'll see everyone uh, next QCon. Is that the? I hope so. Hopefully in person this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>